Most mechanical engineers graduate without ever studying the mechanisms that make real product and hardware design possible. We're taught things like stress strain curves and Navier Stokes equation and how to use CAD software, but not the designs that industry and life changing products actually depend on. The truth is a small set of simple mechanical designs quietly power everything imaginable from manufacturing and transportation to robotics and spacecraft. If you understand them deeply far beyond textbook physics, then you immediately become a much better designer and mechanical engineer. So in this video, we will examine eight of the most essential yet deceptively simple mechanical designs that have had measurable global impact and that virtually every product relies on. For each one, I'll break down the physics and engineering principles behind them, the modern applications where they remain essential, and how modeling and building these will elevate the quality of every mechanical system you design. First on the list is the cam mechanism. A cam is essentially a shaped rotating body that produces a prescribed follower motion. It converts uniform rotational input into non-uniform linear or oscillatory motion. This is one of the earliest forms of motion programming. Before electronics existed, cams provided deterministic sequencing and textile machinery, printing machines, and early automatic equipment. In internal combustion engines, cam shafts control valve lift, timing, and duration with high repeatability. The core physics of cams begins with contact kinematics and curvature. Cams with insufficient radius of curvature will create high pressure angles leading to sliding, wear, and vibration. So the design process involves synthesizing the desired follower motion, then performing inverse kinematics to generate the cam profile. The follower displacement as a function of cam angle determines velocity acceleration and jerk. These values directly influence dynamic forces, surface pressure, and wear. A common design objective is to minimize jerk because it reduces impact loads and improves system longevity. Material selection and lubrication directly affect contact stresses and fatigue life. Even in modern equipment, cams offer reliability and precision without requiring sensors or electronic controls. A project you could do to gain experience is design, model, and machine a custom mechanical cam that drives a specific motion such as an automatically indexing turntable or a time punching mechanism and validate its motion profile experimentally. You gain hands-on mastery and a bunch of skills including kinematic design, motion continuity, force transmission, contact mechanics, profile synthesis, tolerance allocation for sliding pairs, and machining considerations for curved surfaces. Second is the Geneva mechanism. This design converts continuous rotation into intermittent index motion with exact angular increments. The mechanism consists of a driving wheel with a pin and a driven wheel with radial slots. As the pin engages a slot, the driven wheel rotates through a fixed angle. Once the pin disengages, the wheel remains stationary during a dwell period. The number of slots determine the index ratio and dwell time. The contact forces and stresses depend heavily on the pin radius, slot geometry, and the acceleration profile dictated by by angular velocity. This precise combination of indexing and dwell is what allowed early film projectors to advance one frame at a time, synchronize with the shutter. It was a breakthrough in timing accuracy without electronics. Today, Geneva drives continue to appear in indexing tables, packaging machinery, instrument assembly equipment, high-end mechanical watches, and some CNC tool changers. It isn't as common in consumer products like camera shutters and digital projectors anymore because electronics can do stepwise motion more flexibly. So some of the engineering challenges of the Geneva drive involve impact forces during engagement, stress concentrations at the slot corners, and the need for accurate center to center distance. The driven wheel experiences rapid acceleration and deceleration, which generates cyclic stresses that must be managed with appropriate material selection and heat treatment. Their mathematical predictability and simplicity make them highly reliable reliable in automated processes where precise indexing is required. So a cool project could be to design and machine a four or six slot Geneva indexer that rotates a platform for pick and place machine or an automated inspection turntable. Third is the ratchet and paw. The ratchet and paw leverages asymmetric geometry with ramp teeth that allows motion in one direction while a paw blocks any reverse motion. Historically, it greatly improved the safety of lifting and 
and hoisting operations by preventing loads from back driving the mechanism. This reduced the likelihood of catastrophic failure in early cranes and winches. The principle remains the same today in modern load lifting devices. They're widely used in socket wrenches, bicycle freewheels, tie down mechanisms, rescue equipment, and industrial tensioning devices. The tooth angle determines how forces are transmitted from the paw into the ratchet wheel. Proper design ensures that the applied load forces the paw deeper into engagement rather than forcing it out. Contact stress, wear rate, and fatigue characteristics must be evaluated because ratchets often operate under repeated cyclic loads. So the paw spring preload must be sufficient to maintain engagement, but not excessive to the point of increasing friction unnecessarily. One cool project idea could be to design and build multiple small ratchet and paw 3D printed prototypes, compare their engagement characteristics under load, and quantify slippage, backlash, and wear over repeated cycles. Fourth is the Oldham coupling. It's used to transmit torque between two shafts that are parallel but laterally misaligned. This type of misalignment is very common in manufacturing environments because real components rarely align perfectly during assembly. The Oldham coupling consists of two hubs and a center disc. Each hub engages the center disc with a ton and groove joint and the two grooves are oriented orthogonally. As the hubs rotate, the center disc oscillates laterally accommodating misalignment torque transmission. From a technical standpoint, the center disc undergoes a sinusoidal displacement twice per revolution. This creates alternating shear stresses that must be accounted for when selecting the disc material. Metals provide high torque capacity while engineering plastics reduce friction and absorb vibration. Oldham couplings are routinely used in CNC machines, pumps, conveyors, robotics, and motion control systems. As a project, you can model an Oldham coupling in CAD, calculate disc shear stresses under torque, fabricate the center disc using various materials, and test alignment limits on a small motor setup. Fifth is the four bar linkage. The four bar linkage is arguably the most fundamental planar mechanism in mechanical design. It converts rotation into a wide variety of output motions like linear, oscillatory, approximate straight line motion, and more using only rigid links and pin joints. It's ubiquitous and can be found everywhere from automotive suspension systems, robotic manipulators, and aircraft landing gears to door hinges, bicycle suspensions, manufacturing jigs, and mechanical presses. What I love about the four bar linkage is that the engineering foundation is purely geometric. Loop closure equations define position, velocity, and acceleration. Joint reaction forces depend on link lengths, angular velocities, and inertial properties. Designing a four bar linkage requires an understanding of transmission angles, mechanical advantage, and Grashoff's law. A fun little project could be to design a four bar linkage with a specific motion path like a lifting linkage or a parallel motion mechanism. Then simulate joint reaction forces and build a prototype using laser cut acrylic or aluminum plates. At number six is the Scotch yoke. It converts rotational motion directly into linear motion using a simple slot and pin arrangement. As the crank rotates, the pin slides within the slot and forces the yoke to move linearly. Unlike a traditional crank slider mechanism, the displacement of the yoke becomes a parasinusoidal function of the crank angle. This characteristic made the Scotch yoke useful in early engines, compressors, and actuators because it offered fewer moving parts and straightforward kinematics. Engineering analysis centers around sliding friction, impact loads at the ends of stroke, and wear between the pin and slot surfaces. Acceleration peaks occur at the extremes of travel, creating high contact stresses that must be managed with appropriate materials and lubrication. Despite its simplicity, the Scotch yoke is still used in Stirling engines, valve actuators, pneumatic tools, and linear compressors. To learn more about kinematics, contact mechanics, and low prediction, model a Scotch yoke, plot theoretical versus measure displacement, CNC cut a yoke plate, and run it on a small DC motor to observe harmonic motion and friction effects. Now, before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that helped me become a much stronger problem solver and master essential math, physics, and engineering principles was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant helps you excel in math, physics, computer science, data analysis, and AI with visual interactive problem solving and personalized practice. Brilliant is highly effective because you learn through active problem solving, a method proven to be far more powerful than watching 
lectures or videos. It has a perfect mix of interactive problems and motivating challenges, which encourages you to keep making progress. Brilliant starts you at the right level based on your background, designs practice sets and reviews personalized for you, and helps you advance at your ideal pace. Brilliant is crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Harvard, Stanford, Google, and more, so you learn from the best. What I love about Brilliant is that you don't just memorize formulas. You get hands-on with concepts until they make sense and develop the intuition and problem-solving skills to figure things out on your own. One of my favorites is Brilliant's scientific thinking course that teaches you how to think like an engineer with lessons on gear systems, electric circuits, physical structures, and more. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild, scan the QR code on screen, or click on the link in the description below. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Lastly, we can't forget about the leaf spring. Leaf springs are one of the most widely used elastic suspension designs in history. A leaf spring is simply a slender beam or a stack of beams that operate primarily in bending. Its geometric simplicity make it the backbone of vehicle suspension for more than a century, and it remains very common in pickup trucks like the Ford F-150, off-road vehicles, rail cars, trailer axles, and heavy equipment due to its load carrying capability and durability. So as you can guess, the analysis of leaf springs is governed by beam theory. Multi-leaf designs share load through friction between the leaves, which introduces non-linear behavior and hysteresis. Engineers must consider fatigue life, interleaf friction, corrosion, and clamping forces that influence stress distribution. To play around, you can design a single or multi-leaf spring to achieve a specific deflection under load. Laser cut or water jet the leaf from spring steel, heat treat it, and validate deflection using strain gauges. All of these mechanisms illustrate an important principle. Modern machinery and products often rely on elementary mechanical designs that have been refined for more than a century. Their effectiveness comes from predictable kinematics, optimized manufacturability, and the ability to scale across industries from aerospace to consumer products. Based on my experience working in the consumer electronics, tech, and automotive industries, the best mechanical engineers are the ones who not only know how to apply engineering principles, but also understand mechanisms at a system level where motion originates and where loads flow to achieve the desired performance outcomes. Mastering these foundational designs doesn't just make you better at designing linkages, couplings, and mechanical systems. It strengthens the intuition you bring into every project, whether that's tolerancing, material selection, manufacturability, fatigue considerations, or system reliability. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here, where I explain one thing that totally changed my understanding of tolerances, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.